Welcome to World History Channel. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. Catherine Howard was the 10th child of Lord Edmund Howard. She was the niece of the Duke of Norfolk and a first cousin to Henry's second wife, Queen Anne Boleyn. Young Catherine was sent to live with her step-grandmother, Agnes Tilney, the Dowager Duchess of Norfolk. The Duchess ran a large household at Lambeth Palace and she had numerous attendants along with her many wards, who were usually children of relatives who could not afford to support their families in proper tradition of the nobility. Supervision was lax as the Duchess was often at court and took little interest in the upbringing and education of her wards. Consequently, Catherine was the least educated of Henry's wives, although she could indeed read and write, unlike many English women of her time. Her character is often described as merry and vivacious, but never scholarly or devout. Casual upbringing in the probably morally lax atmosphere of the Duchess's household apparently led to a romance with her music teacher, Henry Mannox, around 1536, when Catherine was between the ages of 11 and 15. Mannox soon became old news when Catherine moved to Lambeth with the rest of the Dowager Duchess's household. The Duchess's palatial townhouse was open to an exciting stream of visitors, one of whom quickly set his eyes on Catherine. Frances Dereham was a distant connection of the Howard family and a member of Thomas Howard, 3rd Duke of Norfolk's household. Dereham was a handsome and dashing young man, a far more attractive prospective husband than a music teacher, and Mannox was quickly discarded. Both Catherine and Dereham admitted during their lifetime that their relationship had been consummated, and outside of the bedchamber, they made no secret of their attachment to one another and often acted as though they were engaged. They even went as far as to call each other wife and husband. And while Dereham was eager to make their marriage official, Catherine was unwilling to settle for the first man who had bedded her. She knew ways to prevent herself from falling pregnant and given that marriage was all she had been raised for, was understandably hesitant to tie herself down when she had discovered the joys of sex with none of the responsibility. There was no way either she or Dereham could have predicted how their relationship would come back to haunt them. Like two of her predecessors, her ill-fated cousin Anne Boleyn and Henry's beloved third wife Jane Seymour, Catherine caught Henry's attention as a lady-in-waiting to the Queen who had preceded her, Anne of Cleves. Catherine's uncle, the Duke of Norfolk, found the position for her, no doubt with the intention that his young and pretty niece would catch the King's eye and she certainly did. She left Dereham behind and headed to the English court in 1539, no doubt imagining the dazzling social life she would have there. With no one having taught her that court was far more dangerous than Lambeth. Now 49 years old, Henry VIII was growing older and fatter by the day, and when he met Catherine, was stuck in a marriage that made him miserable. Young and full of life, Catherine enchanted him and her family were quick to encourage his affections and brush Catherine's past relationship with Dereham under the carpet. She was still only around 17 years old when she was showed openly as Queen at Hampton Court in August 1540, having married Henry the day he sent Thomas Cromwell, who had arranged his marriage to Anne of Cleves, to the block on 28th July 1540. The marriage brought with it the rise of the Howard family a proud family who made enemies easily, making Catherine an easy and public target of dislike. Catherine herself wasn't always the easiest to get along with and made several mistakes of her own. She often quarrelled with Henry's oldest daughter, the future Mary I, who was older than her new stepmother by around seven years, and employed girls she had known at Lambeth, who knew her history, to serve her now that she was the Queen of England. Perhaps her biggest mistake was offering the position of private secretary to Frances Dereham. At this point, it was too late for Catherine to admit to the king that she was not as chaste as he had believed her to be when they met, which meant she and the rest of the Howards had to keep her past life at Lambeth secret. It's likely that Catherine offered Dereham the position to keep him quiet rather than to do an old friend a favour. In fact, some historians suggest he may have blackmailed her into doing so. Catherine might have survived the king, or at least very least survived a little longer if it weren't for her relationship with Thomas Culpepper.
Culpepper was a favorite of the kings and it's believed that Catherine and Henry were only married for 6 months before she began to send Culpepper gifts and meet him in private under the watchful eye of her lady in waiting Jane Boleyn more commonly known as Lady Rochford when Catherine joined the king on his progress north in 1541 Culpepper was even smuggled up the back stairs to the queen's chambers There's no evidence to suggest that she and Culpepper ever consummated their relationship, but even if they didn't, they were never to get the chance to do so. When they returned south to Hampton Court, Archbishop Thomas Cranmer was forced to break the news to the king via a letter that he believed the queen had been unfaithful. Henry's initial reaction to the accusations was one of fury, and he demanded an investigation to be carried out to dispel what he believed to be wild rumors. Unfortunately for Henry and even more so for Catherine, both Mannix and Dereham admitted their past misdeeds with the queen and Catherine herself broke down and admitted to her past intimacy with Dereham during a private interview with Cranmer. Still there was no sign of Catherine being charged with adultery. Both she and Dereham denied any intimacy since Catherine's marriage to the king and Catherine continued to claim that though she had called him husband there had been no pre-contract or engagement between them at worst catherine could legally be charged with bigamy and sent away from court in shame until she was questioned about her relationship with culpepper though she admitted to calling him her sweet little fool and giving him gifts she maintained that she had never gone to bed with culpepper their fates were sealed when under torture culpepper admitted he intended and meant to do ill with the queen and in likewise the queen so minded to do with him and Dereham was said to join them on the scaffold when a friend of his conveniently remembered that he once claimed he would marry Catherine if the king were to die Dereham and Culpepper were faced with a traitor's death sentenced to be hanged drawn and quartered at Tyburn on 10th December 1541 Catherine was beheaded on 13th February 1542 in the 16th century dying well was important However terrified Catherine must have been and some reports suggest that she had asked to see the block before she died and even spent the night before her execution practicing how to lay her head upon it she asked the people watching to pray for her and the executioner took off her head with one blow afterwards she was buried in the tower of london's parish church close to the body of anne boleyn